Hello and welcome to Mr. Excalibur. My name is Arthur. Uh, today we have the Cold Steel Warrior Katana. This is actually a review that I have been wanting to do for a while. Um, it is actually one of the <coughs> it's actually one of the first katanas that I really was looking at to do this review for. Um, there's a lot of information about it. There's a lot of almost a, a mystique around this model for a couple of reasons that we'll go into. Um, I found a number of different sources, different kinds of reviews on the Warrior Katana. And uh, of course we're going to get into a lot of the, um, the, the things that have been said a lot about it later on. Um, we're of course going to go through looking at the unboxing. We're going to look at uh, some footage of some other people that have taken a look at it. And then of course my own experiences. Um, so let's take a, a look at some of that footage right now and we'll, we'll get started with this. I'm really looking forward to this one guys. So um, let's, uh, let's see that footage right now. So here we are unboxing the Warrior Katana by Cold Steel. This is the box that it came in. It didn't come in any kind of outer box. Um, this is the very simple uh, sword bag that it came with. And um, one of the interesting things about how Cold Steel packages its katanas, I noticed this with the Gold Lion Katana that I got previous to this, was that they box it very much like knives where the sword itself with its bare blade is wrapped and packaged outside of the saya which you see here is being uh, unwrapped by itself out of some bubble wrap this is typical of usually how knives are wrapped uh, not swords um, in most cases that you guys have seen the uh, swords come already in the Saya. Now this is something that I, I mentioned and that, uh, or I should say I will mention in the wrap up, um, where the, uh, you know, right there at the, the top of the Saya, you've got it kind of scratched up. The rest of the Saya came just fine, but for some reason it had this little, almost like it, <laughs> almost like it got keyed, you know, uh, right there at the, the top of the, the, the Saya. Um, everything about this was fairly simple. The the Segeo cord was was fairly simple, not all that heavy. Uh, sorry, the camera is a little blurry here. The uh, side plug was pretty, you know, simple. I like the kind of metal cap that they put on the end of the side. It was it was nice. It was kind of a nice um, addition. So here, as as I mentioned before, is how the sword is wrapped in the boxes. Uh, you have a separate kind of just cardboard cover over the blade and again this is how usually uh, knives are stored in these boxes the scabbard is outside and then you have on the uh, separate inside the box the blade usually covered up by some kind of you know plastic wrap that seals in any kind of lubricant this sword did come lubricated and then it usually has some kind of you know cardboard covering outside of it and then the scabbard in this case the saya for the katana is separate and uh, that wasn't any different with this one of the interesting things about this was as basic of a grind as this sword has um, the the tip is actually the kasaki the grind on it is actually fairly well defined. I mean, it's a very rough grind, mind you. Um, and the blade, of course, is, you know, it's got that wide, typical uh, blade that the warrior katanas have. But the Kasaki at the tip had this very, very nicely defined ground tip. I mean, there it is again. You know, the grinding is, is very intentional, very clear. It doesn't really need it because it doesn't really have a Kasaki. But, I mean, aesthetically, it's it, it, it was nice to see them, you know, put that much effort into it. One of the things that I immediately found when I took it out of the box and had it was that this myth of it being overweight 
was inaccurate. I did not find it weighted improperly, or if it was heavy, it was very well balanced. And so kudos to uh, Cold Steel for at least keeping it a well-balanced sword. It may have been a little on the heavy side. I didn't really feel that other people have. Um, now here was the paper test, and this did confirm some of the things that have been said, and we'll see them uh, repeat in some other reviews here, <clears throat> and that is that the Warrior Katana does not come very sharp. It is an extremely broad blade and could be sharpened, but out of the box, this is not one of those swords that typically comes, you know, very razor sharp. It just, it just doesn't. It's a very broad blade, and some people I have seen uh, take it and sharpen it. In fact, some of the reviews that you guys are going to see here in a little bit, there's a guy that obviously took this and you know took a whetstone to it and sharpened it, and you know you could do that with it. Um, but right out of the box, not the sharpest uh, of these swords to to come out. But as far as how I was feeling, the Edo wrap was really nice and tight. The um, I thought it was very comfortable, and it was very nice to, to swing around. I thought I thought it was a nice handling sword. This is going to be Matthew Jensen's footage of this sword, and I want to preface it by saying this. Um, a lot of his experiences were virtually the same as mine as far as the sword's cutting ability, which you guys will see my example of uh, after some of these other clips from some people, including Matthew. Um, but what makes this series of, of clips and things from Matthew Jensen's video uh, a little bit more special is he's actually using the same sword. Um, Matthew and I will be getting together to put together a podcast about this particular sword, mainly because of its popularity and how well it's been marketed. But what makes this, like I said, what makes this uh, footage kind of special is not only is he using the same kind of sword, he is actually using the exact same sword. Uh, he and I have uh, exchanged the sword and uh, I had it actually first, I initially bought it, and then um, I gave it to him and for him to test. So this is actually the exact same sword that you'll see me with that you saw me just previously unboxing. Matthew had virtually the same experience that I did, although he did some tatami mat cutting and I did not. And as you can see, he's having some characteristic problems that have often been cited as a problem with the Warrior Katana right out of the box. Now this is the same factory sharp edge that I got when I got it out of the box. Um, he hasn't sharpened it, although he will. Uh, in a little bit here, we've got some other footage that he did when he actually did take it and sharpen it. His experiences were largely that while it cut through water bottles okay, when it came to tatami mat cutting, and this is of course referring to the factory edge, it just did not deliver. Uh, there are plenty of other swords out there at this price point, even in this category of kind of heavy cutters, that do a whole lot better job. And here at one point, he holds up to the camera just how jagged the edge is, and then it actually caught some of the tatami mat straw in the blade. Um, so his experience cutting with it was, was pretty much very negative. And um, you know what, it's, I can't blame him. He and I have kind of teamed up to see what the deal is with the Warrior Katana and you know, uh, minus some other uh, disagreements about how it handled, um, he and I basically had almost the same um, experience cutting with it in the backyard. Now, at this point, he decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it a bit. So he, he took it into his, his garage, his workshop, and uh, honed the edge just a little bit. Um, and he did mention that there was a, a noticeable 
uh, ability to cut, especially the kind of the backyard junk like bottles and here he is working with uh, milk cartons and stuff like that. That was, you know, somewhat of a of a better edge, um, but it, it still it, it still you know he's sharpened swords before on his reviews and got some slightly better results. And so as he's commenting here, he didn't actually like too much how the sharpening affected the edge. Um, from an aesthetics point of view, but, you know, here he is going after the tatami mats, and they are, you know, it, it was a little bit easier to cut with them. But, you know, not to the point where, you know, he would say, yes, this is something that you should go out and get, but just, you know, be prepared for the fact that you might have to sharpen it. Uh, that's really not something that he thought that was, that was worth it. He's working with some slightly older tatami mats, and yes, it, you know, you can see here it is, it is cutting a little bit better, um, but, you know, he's still, you know, whacking pegs and finding that, you know, there were, there were some easier, perhaps more effective ways of, of, of cutting, perhaps with a, a better instrument. So overall, Matthew's experiences here were largely negative from a performance point of view. Leo Convoy's review here, I only put in this part where he's doing some cutting. He's obviously doing he's some, doing some uh, Tamashigiri cutting, and he's just bashing this poor mat to to pieces. Um, his concession during this cutting was that you know he is a beginner. He's he, he's he is just starting out. But the real emphasis of his review, or at least this part of it, was that for Tamashigiri right out of the box. This was a disappointment for him. He just thought that it just was was useless. Uh, he made several comparisons to other implements that probably would cut a lot better than this uh, sword, and had some pretty choice words for it. Just he's just smacking the thing, and it's just not cutting at all. Now, one would think that you know this is definitely a, a check in the column for people who. Uh, don't like how these things cut and it just it, it bashes it more than anything else than than cutting and so you know that was his experience the first half of the video he went through some aesthetics and um, he didn't mind those so much but when he took it out to actually do some cutting um, not the greatest thing in the world a different experience here by another reviewer who decided to just use a very uh, very short video here and um, I'll let it speak for itself. Whack! And cut! And cut! And cut! That was his experience with the Cold Steel Warrior Katana. Obviously, he may have sharpened it. Don't know. Uh, he didn't put anything for it, but obviously a, a very different experience. So we have here the experiences uh, recorded here by the original Ninja. And this guy, quite honestly, is, is showing where the Warrior Katana really does have its strengths, and that is as a backyard cutter. It is an extremely broad blade, um, and this is where it's really going to show its its strength as just this you know thing that you can just really have fun with in your backyard. And he goes through, I don't know where this guy actually is located, but he goes through just kind of you know, swinging around twigs and stuff and just hacking things to pieces. Um, I thought it was funny, someone commented, I, I think on, on one of this guy's videos, 
<clears throat> where he was uh, talking about this sword, where he says, you know, this is the last thing that you really want to see when walking through a forest, where you see a ninja swinging around a samurai sword and just beating things to, to, to pulp. Uh, obviously, he had a bad day, and now you're here. <laughs> And, uh, surprise, you get to, you know, make his day even, uh, potentially worse. Um, but, yeah, this video really just kind of showed, you know, the, the durability of this sword and how he just continues just to hack through twigs and saplings and stuff like that. So, you know... This obviously was a different experience. Maybe he was trying to show a, a different aspect of what the sword can do. Um, it does have an edge. Is it, you know, something you're going to take with uh, Thomas Shigiri? Maybe, maybe not. You know, the previous two reviews, we saw one guy who was very disappointed with it, and another person who obviously was, I don't know if he was necessarily happy with it, but it certainly performed the way it looked like he was intending for it to perform. This guy... Just having fun out in the forest. I'm going to let this little lady speak for herself. Hi there. Today we're going to be testing the Cold Steel Warrior Series Katana. I noticed in their demonstration videos that a lot of the people wielding these swords were men who were six foot plus and rather burly. So I wanted to see what would happen when someone who was five foot four and not so burly swung the sword around. Mind you, these are not difficult tests for this sword, but I still found it fun to do and thought you might find it interesting to watch too. So. Please enjoy, and after the tests, I'll show you some close-up video shots of the sword itself. So here is tax review on uh, on the Cold Steel Warrior Katana, and he basically just goes through a little bit about the aesthetics of the sword, talking about uh, the width of the blade, the size, the very generous size of the fuller, uh, goes into what I found out about it, and that was how, you know, how wide the blade was, but they put this very big fuller into it that is proportional, and that probably contributes to how nice the thing handles. Uh, also goes into the very clearly defined and ground Kasaki. Um, one of the things that's really nice about it is that despite the fact that it doesn't really need a, a, a nicely defined Kasaki, they, they put one in it. So I mean, it's, it's a concession to people who at least wanted to have a nice look to it. Here's another thing that I have found that none of these people complain about despite having other complaints and that is how solid the thing is built. The Eater Wrap is very tight. That's it, it's a it seems to be a, a consensus amongst most people. And um, all the fittings, despite putting it through whatever they put it through, still remain tight. Now, one thing he is pointing out here is again something that we've seen uh, not only in previous reviews, but you'll see in mine too, and that is how sharp it isn't. Um, it this it. it this, this seems to be just a common thing where people just don't find it that sharp at all coming right out of the box. And, um, but you know, it, it, the thing is, you know, for what you're getting, 
um, you're, you're getting something that has often been described as, you know, something that's shaped, you know, nicely shaped in the form of a katana, but isn't really one. I don't think that's very fair, but, you know, that's some people's, you know, statement about it. Here's going to do the paper test, and it, it shaves, you know, and then it doesn't. Um, you know, he's, he's literally at some point kind of just sawing through this, um, but, you know, that's, that's his experience, and that was some tougher paper and shows how it just kind of rips through it. So, again, that's, that's his experience. Now, I have to say, when it came to encountering the uh, Cold Steel Warrior Katana, this was something that I... I there, there were so many reviews on this, and there was so much information on it. There were so many people who either liked it, hated it. I, you know, I, I approached this review from, a, a, a point of, from the point of, well, let's try and get a consensus as to what most people feel about it. How it handles how it cuts, the aesthetics of it, is it worth it? Um, and so this is my experience. And I have to say, you know, the handling of it, I thought was really nice. I, I really enjoyed handling this sword. Um, it had a nice move about it for, for the wide blade that it had. I was, I was surprised. So many people had said, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's really heavy, it's overweight. I did not find that the case at all. And so I, I think that's somewhat unfounded. Now it came to cutting things on the other hand. <laughs> now that's a water bottle and I am, um, I mean, I, I, I sort of cut into it and then it, you know, I put it back to give it another whack and, um, yeah, it, it cut through it, but you know, it was it, it was no slicer. I, I found I really did have to put some some emphasis behind it. Um, but you know what? Hey, now that is now unlike milk bottles, these heavier juice bottles are. It takes a little bit to cut through them, and this one didn't do half bad of a job. Now against milk bottles, of course, this thing you know it's it's still a sharpened sword. Let's get back to the you know almost fundamental basics of what this thing is and yeah it just it plowed through them like not a whole lot of problems so I mean that I it's, it's not a whole lot to say <laughs> um, but again when it came to the you know to the, the plastic the heavier plastic um, juice bottles this thing had some problems with it you know now, to say nothing, this is the empty bottle test, and uh, we'll, we'll just see how how this how this went. Um, you can probably guess how this went, but you know it's fair to do a test of of it too. And whee, away it goes. Well, let's give it another shot. Whee, away it goes. <laughs> so I finally gave up on that and said, okay, let's just you know haul into the TV box. Uh, this is hardened uh, cardboard. Now, for some people going, what's hardened cardboard? These TV boxes are made of really heavy cardboard, and if you let them soak out in the rain and then dry out, the cardboard actually gets pretty hard. Uh, in addition, there's a lot of packing material inside. So even with that, I um, want to give you an idea of how far it went. Didn't go that far. So. Again, kind of proving what a lot of people say about the lack of sharpness of how sharp the, the blade it just is not. Well, as with all swords, we have the, the basic maintenance here. Um, if this is the first video of mine that you are seeing, um, I'm going to kind of go over this again as I'm oiling this one. These swords that are on the market today are high carbon uh steel swords and that means without some kind of oil if you're going to be storing them for a long period of time or just washing them off they will rust and they will rust quickly and I don't care how much money you spent or didn't spend 
Um, there'll be a rusting pile of brown iron oxide junk if you don't oil them. So please do when you store them so you have them to play with another day. This time we're going to look at my kind of overall impressions of the Cold Steel Warrior Katana. Let's take a look at it. Okay, first of all, I think what I'm going to do is I have this ordered a little bit differently on my cheat sheet here, but you know what, I think I'm going to go over this right now, and this is where we kind of uh, blab on here just a little bit, but I think this one really kind of deserves a little bit of blabbing, um, and that is there's almost a mystique around the cold steel warrior katana, and that's partly because of the company. Uh, the company's... Uh, owner is, um, he, he has certainly his own way of, of doing things. I'm not going to get into that. Um, that's actually, unfortunately, part of what has added to the, uh, the, the Cold Warrior, the, the Cold Steel Warrior Katana Mystique it has been its owner. I don't think it's very fair when looking at an actual product, so all that and all the politics that have been aired about Cold Steel's owner all that aside, we're not, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so, first of all, um, one of the things that I wanted to first talk about here is the fact that uh, the, the, the warrior katana is often referred to as a um, essentially a, a sharpened crowbar. Uh, that has been, you know, it, it, they call it that, they call it overbuilt. They call it, you know, a, a chopper, a, a backyard cutter. All of these things are kind of uh, built around how wide they made the blade on this sword. And it is significantly wider than what you will find on just about any other katana out there that's uh, at this price range, or for that matter, just about any price range. Um, it really is quite different. So the fact that it's, um, kind of, I'm going to kind of go over some of these these myths or, or things that have been repeated a lot on the internet about this. So overbuilt, wide blade, yeah, check. Um, so that's, that, that's one. Next thing. And this was one that really kind of baffled me because it was almost cliche. Um, and this has to do with a note on Cult of Athena's website when they talk about the condition these usually show up in. And that is, they have a note on their ad for this model that says typically they show up with the Saya kind of scratched up. And they usually Cult of Athena has a pretty good level of quality control. 
coincidentally, I actually didn't get this one from Cult of Athena, but they stated on their website that uh, this is such a regular thing that they just had to state that, you know, despite their quality control efforts, this is usually what it comes in, and it comes scratched. And when I got it out of the box, as you guys saw, sure enough, it had a scratch right here. However, to me, it almost looked like someone had said, well, I guess they come scratched, so let's just take a knife and kind of go and put a, a scratch by it. Other than that, the side is in fine shape. It's, I mean, for, for what it is, it's in pretty good shape. So, I have to, you know, check a box there as well when it comes to some of the things people have typically said about this model. Damaged Saya in some way. Um, the next category is um, what they typically call a sword having an axe handle. In other words, it's overly large or really wide. I did not find that the case. In fact, I found the handle on the Warrior Katana to be actually very, very comfortable. So much so, as you guys saw in the in the cutting video, I used this bare hand, I didn't even use gloves. And so I found that to be untrue. I don't know really where that comes from, um, as far as how wide the handle is. So the whole thing about it having a, an overly large handle, I really don't know where that comes from. Um, it is perfectly fine to me. Uh, but again, that's, you know, that's my subjective opinion. Other people, obviously, you know, with as many times as people have said that, obviously the consensus by a lot of people out there, or at least people willing to review this thing, say that it has a, a wide handle. For me, that's not the case. So I'm going to say no, not true, as far as that category for me. Um, so, Next thing I wanted to talk about was that the, uh, the aesthetics on the sword I found really nice and consistent. There's this motif that they have on all of the fittings, including an additional metal cap here at the end of the saya. I'm sure there's a Japanese term for that as well, even though I, you don't see it very often. Um, where you have these two shapes, one looks like either a, a stingray with a long tail, the other one is this U-shaped device that looks more like what the um, guys back in the, back in Europe used to use to, to hold their, their muskets in place. <clears throat> Whatever they are, they're consistent and it's a nice motif throughout the whole thing. Even the, the Manuki on the uh, on the handle has those has those um, uh, has that theme running through it, which I thought was pretty good. Um, my overall impression of the sword is that if you're someone who is a serious practitioner, um, this probably is not going to be very attractive to you. Not that it shouldn't, it's just that it probably won't. Uh, there are other swords out there that are going for a much more authentic look. Um, again, authentic is a, is a terribly subjective term. Um, I'll give you guys an example. The Kasaki. The, the tip here I thought was really well done considering this is you know all ground very roughly um, they actually ground the the tip here really well um, it's a nice you know clearly defined kasaki on, on the end um, not that it really needs to be but they added that design tip in it to kind of an homage to typical design features of a katana and it looks nice um, but as far as you know someone who wants to take this out in their backyard and just have fun with it this is it when they call this thing the king of the backyard cutters I have to agree um, I, you know if you're looking for somebody who wants a katana who really isn't serious about practicing the Aido or Aikido or Kinjutsu or any of the other, you know, martial arts that have to do with using a katana. They're just kind of, you know, fooling around with it. This is the one to get. Um, 
it's going to be something that's going to be good for their money, but not something overly expensive. So where they, you know, if they really bang it up, they're not going to be losing a great deal. In my opinion, this katana is what I call the uh, Kendall Fire of the katana world. It is different enough and I think is aimed at a different enough market that Cold Steel uh, should actually be marketing these, not necessarily to the serious practitioner or even someone who you know, is even considering it, but really is just something to have a lot of fun with that's made of a good sturdy material. And as a result, I mean, personally, I would probably price it at about 20, 30, maybe even 40 bucks less and really get it in a separate price point all by itself and really set it aside as its own category. It really is different. Um, it was a lot of fun to play around with in the backyard. Um, but serious practitioners have been poo-pooing this thing for years. Um, is it something serious that they're going to be working with in the backyard? Probably not. Um, but are they going to have fun playing with it? Yes. So I hope that was uh, informative for you. Uh, this certainly was fun. I hope maybe I've dispelled some of the, the popular myths of the Warrior Katana. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.